Be my name is Lowell and welcome to the channel. So recently I had the pleasure of sitting down with David Phelps, having a bit of a chat about his latest album, Stories and Songs Volume 2. So let's jump into the interview. David Phelps, thank you very much for being here. It is a great pleasure. As you know, I am a huge fan of your music. It's been about four years since we've been reacting to your music. Uh, as I was saying before, you know, obviously started with Oh Holy Night. Uh, as most reactors get uh, requested to do. So your voice, obviously very powerful, blew me away right from the start. So every Monday we do a weekly dose of David Phelps on the channel. So uh, it's been going for about two years. Very, very popular for the channel as well too. So um, you probably didn't know you had that much music to do every Monday for two years. So <laughs> there's a lot of music, a lot of music. So, uh, and we really, really appreciate you being here too. So, well, so thank you for taking the time for me no thank you very i know you're a very extremely busy man with uh new albums coming out as well too so obviously promoting uh stories and songs volume two so we've been enjoying those releases here on youtube for about two months or so now so um to say it's a multi-genre album is probably an understatement you know you've got everything from opera to musical theater to classic rock songs and obviously one very iconic Australian song, um, which we'll get to in just a moment. So, so I just want to say, um, I just want to start asking by, you know, you've reprised some of your older songs on here. Uh, for example, like um, Break Free. We heard that story about your roller skating slash kickboxing accident. So <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the new standout songs was um, Dead Man Rising. I thought that was a brilliant song. Very powerful lyrics. I, I think it comes from a, a completely different standpoint as well. You know, we've heard songs from the Apostles. We've heard songs from Mary's perspective. But from a tomb guard, I've never seen that before. I thought that was a, a great way to to kind of express what was happening at that moment. So how did how did you come about that song? How did that start? Well, I, I had the song for... I think I wrote that back in 2019. And so, so it's been sitting uh, in my, uh, at my piano for a long time, you know, yeah. just waiting for the right, right time for that um, to be. It. And, and also um, I kind of had to develop it a little bit too, mm. and, mm. and really get past, get past the poetry of it. And, and, you know, what am I going to do here vocally and all that kind of stuff to, to kind of going, okay, how are we going to produce this to make it, to make it different and to make it um, to where it catches people, you know? Mm, mm. And so uh, that was a little bit of a, a process on that too, because I, I want things to sound, you know, I didn't want it to sound like anything else that I've done, you know? Yes. Yeah. And so, so, you know, we take great, great care in that. And, and the story is, is the same story, you know, that, that we've told over and over again yeah. about the resurrection of Jesus. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that the challenge for me in, in uh, telling that story for now 30 something years of, of touring and singing and recording yeah. is how do I tell this story again? Uh, so it makes people make, uh, you know, pay attention, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and because I, I, I love the story and, and so I'd never written anything from the view, from the from the standpoint of uh, the guard before, and mm. I'm not the first one to do that. But mm. uh, I I kind of had to throw my uh, hat in the ring, you know. So um, yeah. and so hopefully it hopefully it uh, grabs people in that way just because it's a different viewpoint. Yes. Yeah. Um, and but they still get uh, the the you know great meaning behind the story. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's the thing, you know, when you have great music and you have a meaning behind it, you, you get that meaning. You don't even actually know you're getting it because you're listening to the music. It was a very unique way you delivered that song as well, too. So that kind of stare down the camera as well. So everybody is, you know, hooked into your you what you're doing at that moment. So uh, I thought it was very effective. Very, very well, effective. Th yes. I, um, you know, what, what a video that has affected me, had, had just impressed me early on in my career that I've always loved was the Elvis comeback video in the round. Oh, yes. And yes. I saw that. But when I saw that, I thought that is brilliant. 
his set yeah. is people. Yep. 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 Behind him is people reacting to what he's doing. Yeah. And all it does is make the, the viewer behind the behind the TV screen, it makes us engage more because you know we know that yes. we're not in uh, feeling that way. That that video always just uh had impressed me for years and years. So I've tried to use that technique in different ways over the years um, in producing um, my videos. And and on this one, we didn't have an audience no, for, no. Uh, for the video shoot. Yeah. So I was like, but let's let's get everybody engaged here. Let's get everybody involved. Yeah. And they're joining the story one by one. They're they're players in this, you know. Yes. Um, yes. And so. Uh, so I, I was I was really excited about you know trying to trying to pull all that off. It was yeah, it was yeah. great fun. As a huge Elvis fan who has watched that um, comeback special numerous numerous times, uh, it fills my heart with joy to to know that that was one of the inspirations for that song. Yeah, um, yeah, that's very nice, very very nice. So so as I was saying before, you know this album is so many genres on it. You know you're touching opera and everything else. How how do you go about narrowing down that breadth of work to an album size? You know, what kind of songs are you looking for? Is there any, did you have kind of songs in your mind going into this album? Say, look, this is kind of what I want this album to sound like. So. Well, um, the, basically I do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the that best way. Sound, that's right. I don't mean that to sound. <laughs> Uh, proud or arrogant or whatever but but um i i've spent the since i was 18 and started doing concerts yeah. i've spent from that moment until currently now with with people speaking into my career mm. Uh, mm. well meaning yeah. yeah um but trying to get me to to be a portion of that yes. you know yeah. just do broadway or just do classical yeah. or just yeah. do just do these songs that fit on the radio and um that's just not who i am no. you know and and i and i have to be who i am i'm a storyteller and i'm a stylist yes uh, and uh that's that is what makes up my art um i'm a stylist in the way that i have the privilege of of jumping in and singing a classical song or yeah. or doing somewhere from West Side Story yes. or doing a song. Um, and, and I think that that has, um, that definitely is part of the definition of who I am. Mm -hmm. And I think it also makes for a very interesting tour, you know, because people come and they don't get just one sound. No, you that's know, right. That's I, right. We have a, we, we stitch all this together in this tapestry yeah. and, um, we we create a, a very interesting kind of journey through through the evening. So, and and touring and being you know delivering these messages on stage, the um is is really my end goal. You know, um, I I make music in the studio, so I have stuff to uh, perform live. Yeah. That's where my heart is. So. Yeah that's that's excellent so I, i've heard you say you're a stylist before and that's basically how come your career has kind of progressed and is still that's got that longevity in it as well too so um and i think i remember you saying in that when game changer came out you said that you know these songs of me so and i think you've con continued that on from that album where you've kind of added in your own personality into your album so um i think that's the well, way to yeah. go I, and I've done it from the beginning, you yeah. know, um, I, I think, I think where people might get confused, you mentioned Game Changer mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, uh, or you said to people were like, this is, this feels very pop. And I'm like, well, I've always done this. Yeah. Yeah. I've had pop records before. And, um, but the thing is they had just seen me in one setting before, you yes. know? Yes. So hopefully we pulled them along and, uh, they <laughs> jerked. <laughs> that that's you know obviously you know started reacting to yourself you know through the gaithers so that was the the setting that i'd seen you in before but when game changer came along it's like okay so now we've got to delve into those other records those other records listen to me i'm not that old 
uh, those <laughs> other albums. So you know, where you like, where you do do a little bit of uh, pop and contemporary music as well too. So uh, and and this album, as I said, you know, you kind of you tackle some very classic rock songs as well, such as you know, Dust in the Wind. <laughs> I want to know what love is, and obviously, Bridge Over Troubled Water. How do you what's your creative process of taking those songs changing them slightly so it's your stamp on it but not going too far where people don't recognize the songs anymore and it's like oh too much too far so yeah. what's your I, process it's it's interesting you know i have sons now and sons mm. and daughters we have yeah. two girls and then we have uh two boys and um I, I said we have son i have sons now because this specifically happened with one of my boys he's very talented musically and um he, he'll call me to the piano a lot yeah. um and i uh, go what do you think about this and i'll say usually the first thing i say is let's simplify things here you know yeah. you're you you can do a lot let's not do it all in one song <laughs> that's a le- that's a lesson yeah. i had to learn as, yeah. a, as a creative person yeah is that you work when you're young to really fill your bag of tricks up yeah you know try to figure out how to how to write poetry how to write a a line that that means something and mm-hmm. rhymes how to yeah. how to do a, how to write a melody line yeah. um and then all the different ways you can harmonize it and within different styles you know you learn all that stuff yeah and then when you start putting it to use you have to figure out well what needs to go here yes uh, yes you know restraint is one of the biggest lessons that any artist has yeah. to learn um for their whole life and so um when i at this point and i've made this i've i've done it wrong before mm. um but at the point when i come up to a song like i want to know what love is i go what's the magic in this song mm. why 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 am i consider doing this song because mm. you know i it's i know it why do i know this what is yeah. the what is thing about this song that that made everybody including myself fall in love with it <laughs> and so you have to go well i have to keep that yeah and whatever that is and a lot of times that's the melody line sometimes it's the actual licks that the singer does yes you know yeah um like well the song it the the you know the way the singer sang it and went off the melody line becomes iconic to the song so you yeah. gotta have to yeah. you gotta uh, got to keep those things yeah and so you really study it and go um these are the things i'm going to keep these are the things i'm going to bring to it and now let's start cooking here okay know? okay that's an interesting way to do it. it as you said you know keep that that true essence of the song and then kind of build around that so it becomes your song but people still recognize it so your version of um dust in the wind by kansas was fantastic absolutely fantastic uh obviously a, as i said you know a very very iconic rock song as well too so so yeah. you're talking there about um you know spending time with your children and doing that like on um volume one volume two has your 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 daughters uh involved as well so uh and then a nephew as well um coming along for the for the journey as well so it must be at this point in your life where you can actually sit down and make music with your family, your daughters, that must be such a great privilege to be able to do that. It is. It is. My daughters and my sons too. They yeah. weren't on that video, but on this new, this new album that's coming yeah. out. Yeah. Speak of love. Um, I had both my sons in the background vocal group that we did. And uh, we, we, we added um, go rest high on that mountain. Oh, Vince Gill yes. Yes. To this and um my daughter callie sings that with me and my son grant sings that so it's a a trio there so yeah they they all we all just yeah. make music yeah. i think part of it is genetic I, I i have no doubt that part of it is genetic mm-hmm. but a lot of it is environment too yes. i mean music yes couldn't can't step into a room in our house without something music you know happening so happening yes I think that's a wonderful way to grow up as well. That music surrounding you as well. Uh, it's a good way, uh, communication for sure, bringing families together. So instead of sitting around screens and everything else, like we do these days as well. So, uh, yeah, so give us- yeah. yeah. Um, so let's get into 
so when this um album came out stories and songs volume two you put out little snippets on youtube you know what's coming up and the you know album releases now there was one song that obviously caught my attention straight away um ozzy ozzy um iconic song by originally by john farnham came out in yep. um 1986 i think it was That's so right. um instantly recognizable by any australian worth their salt um and obviously you know we grew up singing this song is everywhere it, even now you can st still hear it on the radio every day pretty much every day it's on the radio very very popular so um and john is um what we call a larrikin in australia a larrikin is kind of somebody who likes to kind of joke around likes to have a good time but um when he sings the whole you know the whole of australia just stops and listens he's got a very very wonderful voice probably one of the greatest australian singers that we have so so when i heard that you were going to do this this like, song i think he's like your biggest selling artist yes. ever yes so yes it's just yeah huge what a huge career and impact yes. yeah yes he uh i think it was 1960 something he started with a uh, novelty songs um i think it was sadie the clean and lady so he's kind of he's kind of always kind of been a, a bit of a a bit of a larrikin as we say you know somebody who likes to have a bit of fun so but um when i heard you were going to sing this song it was kind of like my my real life and my youtube life kind of colliding together you know so um i've heard a lot of people sing it you know some people sing it completely different some people kind of butcher it you know but um I think you did a wonderful job. I think as you were saying there about capturing the essence of the song, I think you definitely did that as well too. So, um, so how did this song come to be on this album? It's not a American song. You, you know, you have obviously, um, classic American rock. So how did this one come about? So I, I'm a teenager in 1986. So <laughs> I, I, uh, the song, um, and I, but I had forgot, I had forgotten about it mm -hmm. and my daughter, Callie, when we were looking for songs and yeah. uh, I was, she sent me a text. She was like, you got to consider this one. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest with you. It is yeah. a hard song to sing. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it is probably the hardest song on the whole project to sing. Yeah. And so I, I didn't answer for a little while, <laughs> but <laughs> kept pressing, she kept pressing. And I was like, I don't know. I, I, I got to see if I can sing this song. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it just stays up there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's pretty high. He, he, he is a high tenor. So he, he does get up there pretty high. So but incredible voice. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. And, you know, um, I went through the same process with it as, mm. uh, as everything uh, else that I do, just like, what's the magic in here? And of course the magic of this more than anything is mm -hmm. John Farnham. Yes. Yes. And, and yeah. uh, you know, the way he, um, the way he sang it. So I tried to stay as close to that as, as possible. And, yeah. um, and, and just, you know, respect that for listeners who, who might happen upon um, my take of it. Yeah. And then, you know, we get into the studio and, um, you know, I had Julio Barreto, who is an orchestrator, um, uh, that works with the Atlanta Pops Orchestra. I had him orchestrate it with the strings. Okay. Uh, on, and then you get it. I got into the studio and started singing it. And I think I went through all the stages of grief as I <laughs> <laughs> and just, just thinking, going, "Wow, I gotta, uh, I gotta get through this because it, it is, it is tough." It is Anybody, tough. Yeah. That's a throwaway pop yeah. song, you know. Yeah. And you just go to your car and you try to sing along with yes. John. Yeah. <laughs> I, I i must admit i have butchered that song many a time many a time <laughs> it is yeah it is one of those songs that as you say you know it might just be a throwaway pop song but once you get into the meat of it it is a tough song it is a tough it's, song to sing yeah, it's amazing it's an amazing message too yes. that yes you know as you as i'm focusing on the lyrics i'm going wow this could be yeah written you know every bit of for today yes it's, yes uh, it was it, uh, originally written um i'm almost like a protest song but more like an individual voice can change can bring along change so so that's obviously the hence the the title you're the voice so 
Um, yeah. It actually came out with uh, a bit of controversy because it actually showed a bit of uh, domestic violence in the original video. Um, so, you know, obviously people are up in arms and that, but that was the whole point of the song. You know, you're the voice. If you see something, say something, you know, and you're the, you're the voice for change. So, um, but as I said, you know, people look on it now as an, just an iconic Australian song that people butcher everywhere around the world. So, um, <laughs> I bet, I bet there's some karaoke bars that are going to be playing it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So, um, so obviously, you know, John is actually just um, recovering from um, cancer surgery at the moment in Australia. He's just celebrated his 75th birthday. So he's doing well at the moment, so which is good. So which is good news for him. So so Very you good. did mention your um, your new album coming out uh, in August, I believe it is. Um, August so 30th. August, yep. Um, so Speak of Love, it does say you have um, five original songs on there as well too, so... Now, are you able to divulge any information about that, or is that kind of sure? Yep. Yeah, we've. Already, um, it is out of my hands now. <laughs> that's um, it. That's no more. That's it. Yeah. Yours. <laughs> it's in manufacturing now, and uh, that's it it's on its way. So that yeah. that feels really, really great. Great. Um, yeah, I I constantly write, mm. and so. I at any time have probably 50 songs to choose from for oh, a wow. project. Oh, wow, okay, yeah. Um, we had a list of songs already that I knew I wanted on this Okay. that we hadn't released uh, before, like, um, I, um, like I Have Nothing yeah. uh, that we did on the DVD, uh, the video, Stories yeah. and Songs, Volume yeah. 1, and I Can't Help Falling in Love With You, and... Yeah. Um, and then some from volume two as well that we'd never, we, we have a, a studio version of those songs. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit backwards the way we did it. We, you know, <laughs> a lot of times at least the studio project and then the video, but we did it, we did it backwards this time. And so we have studio versions of some of those songs coming out and then the new songs as yeah. well um, that I wrote for this project. One is the song called Speak of Love that mm -hmm. I cannot wait I cannot wait for this song and and just the the message okay uh get out because i i want i want to start a, a movement yeah with this idea and the idea behind the song is that our words create um as you know the the thing we we speak into our world what we want it to be yes yes and and if 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 we're believers if mm -hmm. we're if we're followers of um the scripture we yeah. know that the whole bible starts out with and god said yeah let there be light yeah. words create and didn't stop with that and so we we create angst mm -hmm. or we create joy yeah. you know we create um stress and you know we can do all that with with our with our words and yeah. so words words very important and i think uh, our society has forgotten a lot of that i think a lot of us get online yep. and get on social media and yep. just say horrible things and expect it to roll off our backs like water on a duck you know yes. but um but it doesn't it begins yep. to create the world we live in and so that's the message of the song so much you can tell i'm very passionate about that yes i i'm, I'm looking forward to uh, that is a wonderful the, thing as you said you know putting it out there in the universe definitely helps. Uh, you know, I, as a creator myself, you know, you, you might get a thousand positive messages. You get that one and it's that one that sticks in your craw and it's just like, Oh, yes. you know, so even though you have all these positive, it's just that one that it just, it, I don't know, it manifests something inside you, you know? So, but this wonderful speak of love, you know, you know, put that out there, put that love out there. Uh, in the universe, and we definitely need more of that these days. I tell you, um, even I just around the world. So um, that is a, a brilliant positive uh, movement. So uh, I'm sure we'll get to reacting to that once that comes out as well. I can't, I can't wait to to listen to it as well too. So, so one of the singles we're, we'll yeah. have two singles come out in August. Okay, and that the one of those two before the album comes out. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. I'm sure that will be on the on the channel once that once that drops. That would be great. 
because uh, as you know, we we love your music here. Um, we definitely love reacting to it too. So uh, you can sing any genre, which is, um, you know, amazing and uh, terrible at the same time because I can't sing a word. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just um, <laughs> sometimes it's like, yes, that's David for you. He can sing anything he wants. So so you, you do have a new tour coming up. Uh, now, obviously, I'm just throwing it out there. As you said, you know, speaking to the universe what you want. Is there any chance you're coming to Australia anytime in the near future? You know, I, I've <laughs> been to Australia a handful of times yes. and it's amazing. Um, it's it is a long way a, away. We know that. Not a so. <laughs> yes. So. We, we need to make it happen. Yes. Um, I, I, uh, I would love it. I would yes. love it. So yeah. yeah. We need to figure that figure that out. Yes, you certainly do have a lot of fans uh, down under. Uh, we'd love to hear your version of "You're the Voice" live as well. I think that would be amazing. So, obviously, for me, the ultimate would be coming to a, a barn bash um, outing. So, looking at that, that's what that's what the future holds for me. So, hopefully, touch wood, yeah. in the next few years, I'll I'll be there in the barn. So, I, I, I have a lot of community, as I said here um, on the channel. And every, probably every two months, when are you coming to a barn bash? When are you coming to a barn bash? It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So uh, that's definitely the the ultimate goal. So I'd love to go over there. So, so as you said, you know, you've been doing this for, for 30 years, this music industry, the music business. Is there still people that you would love to collaborate with? Is there anybody that kind of inspires you that you would go, oh my God, I would give anything to to do some music with them. You know, the, I definitely have singers that I am just wowed by. Yeah. You know, someone who I think is just at the top of her game right now um, is Kelly Clarkson. Oh she God, is, yes, yes. She just that is another me. one. But, yes, yes. I mean, I I, uh, I listen to her voice. Yeah, and it's it's just you know yeah. how to, to figure it out it's just really and she has gotten so much more solid mm. as uh, she has uh, matured yeah, yeah. i mean it, she just can do anything she's yes. amazing she's another one of those singers that irks you and inspires you at the same time um <laughs> we were just listening she's... to her yesterday actually on a live stream so oh yeah yes i love her mind too so yes. that's that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah she is another one of those things that um i can sing anything absolutely fantastic singer absolutely fantastic so so that's all the questions i have um at the moment um as i said i do appreciate you coming along and spending some of your precious time with us i know you're obviously extremely busy um with all the farming and everything else as well too not just music as well too so um, I have a mother-in-law that owns a farm and, you know, she, it's very busy. There's always something to do. Always, always. something to do. Yeah. So. Oh, it, you know, we're, we're empty nesters now. My, my kids moved off oh, and left okay. here with this farm to take care of by myself. <laughs> 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 That's right. Wow. Okay. It, it makes a difference when it's an empty nest. We had that for about a year and then the kids came back and it's just like, okay. Yeah. Enjoy yeah, it while it lasts. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy it while it lasts so uh so david thank you very much for joining us here on the channel uh we look forward to obviously um your new album coming out in august uh and anything else you've got coming out as well too so we'll continue to do our weekly dose of david phelps on a monday uh, i'm sure that will continue for as long as you keep putting out music there's still quite a bad catalog to to get through as well too so we really do appreciate it so thank you very much thank you lyle appreciate it Thank to be you. with you nice thank you so guys hopefully you enjoyed that a little insight into stories and songs volume two from david phelps there thank you very much for watching it and obviously thank you very much david for sitting down again with us uh here on the channel in the meantime guys make sure you stay safe and i'll definitely see you in the next reaction video did you enjoy that video why not watch another one